Hello everyone, happy new year. I hope you guys had good holidays and had a nice rest. I certainly did. I don't know if that's like the best thing or not, but yeah, so this video I was actually planning to make it the last video of 2021 for me, but unfortunately it ended up being the first video of 2022 instead because I just completely fell off the wagon when it comes to YouTube uploads, unfortunately. But, you know, at least I got a relatively decent break and I was slowly able to work my, my way up to productivity again. And yeah, honestly, the first thing I want to say is that I'm super happy about how last year went in terms of YouTube and in terms of a lot of other things as well. And I want to thank you guys, um, every single one of you for like watching my videos and leaving comments and stuff. And I honestly feel like YouTube is something I would consider now my main social media platform. Um, I have definitely kind of skipped around social media before and um, I was main mainly on instagram for a very long time like longer than any other social media before i think but at this time i think um, my commitment to youtube has definitely surpassed my commitment to instagram so yeah i don't really know what that entails exactly or if that means anything to anybody other than me but yeah i just wanted to let you guys know that i appreciate you a lot and i'm really glad that i decided to be more active on youtube and i'm very happy that all of you are watching my videos and leaving comments and stuff and uh, yeah it's very encouraging and i'm super excited about the new stuff that i'm gonna make this year so yeah, that being said, what you're looking at here is the pictures that I did for New Year or like a holiday theme type of thing with my two characters, Sweet and Zero. They're the same ones that are pictured in the banner of my YouTube channel. And I actually decided to record video footage that includes my hand drawing on the actual tablet that I'm using, which is the galaxy book pro 360 which i did like a sponsored video for a couple of months ago i actually wanted to give you guys a little update on that and how it's been using it since i got it a couple of months ago also i thought that it's actually pretty rare to see videos where people record their hand drawing on a tablet so i thought that would be kind of interesting to see and i'm glad i did it because uh yeah, it's actually kind of fun to see even for me anyways so the biggest couple of differences with me using the Galaxy Book Pro now versus two months ago is that I got a little external Bluetooth keyboard, which you can see on the left-hand side of the screen. And it's this little Logitech, uh, very small, thin, portable keyboard. Um, trying to remember what it's called, but I I'm just gonna link it in the description when I'm editing the video. So that's been totally great. It honestly served its purpose perfectly well, um, especially since it's super light and you can put it pretty much anywhere, like even on one of one knee or something, like it fits super easily. The only thing I'm gonna say is that it has this one button that uh, that's for language switching, I think, that's completely unnecessary and is located where the control button is located on my, most of my other keyboards. So that's a little bit annoying to get used to, but otherwise it's um, relatively inexpensive and it's perfect for this purpose. So when, um, I don't know if this actually makes sense, so I'm just gonna, uh, explain why I needed a keyboard in the first place. This uh, laptop, the Galaxy Book Pro 360, basically, once you fold it inside out and it turns into a laptop, oh, sorry, a tablet, you can no longer use the keyboard and thus I had to get an external keyboard to use the shortcuts on Photoshop. So yes, that's the quick explanation. And the second thing that's different now is that I was using like a hack version for a screen protector because the natural screen like the default screen that it comes with is very slippery and super reflective so i couldn't find a paper texture screen protector for it initially so i just kind of slapped the one i had left over from an ipad pro and that ended up actually shaving quite a bit off of the stylus tip um from the galaxy book pro and I, I mean, it was working fine at that point still. And then I wanted to try just a simple matte screen protector instead as somebody has suggested in the comments. And so I did that and that actually worked super well. The matte protector, screen protector is perfect. The texture is really good, but I think 
either it continued to slightly shave the tip of the stylus or it was just already kind of deteriorated from usage prior to switching over to the matte screen protector. Regardless, it started actually kind of slightly malfunctioning. And by malfunctioning, I mean, it was just like failing to register one out of like 30 strokes or something, which, you know, it was kind of annoying. I can still use it, but uh, because of this, I ended up switching over to my PC with the Cintiq pro um for like you know like the the end of this drawing unfortunately i couldn't finish the whole thing on the galaxy book pro because i was just getting too annoyed at the malfunctioning of the stylus so what i'm planning to do next is basically just buy some replacement tips for the stylus and see how long it holds up with the matte screen protector because it is quite a bit more mild than the paper texture one like the paper Paper texture one is very rough. I think it's unnecessarily rough, so I don't know. Hopefully that helps um, to keep the stylus functioning for longer. I think overall it seems to be an unavoidable problem because, for example, with my usage of the um, Cintiq 24 Pro, I still have to replace the stylus tips like you know once every couple of months or something like once every few months because i like the felt tip and um that also like gets worn out and so i guess that's just a sacrifice that you have to make but yeah overall aside from that everything is still great about the galaxy book pro now it's still totally recommended just uh i would avoid the paper any paper texture screen protector and i guess be ready to have to replace the tips at some point point if you're going to use a screen protector at all so that being out of the way uh, i want to tell you guys a bit about the process so um obviously i just wanted to make like a cute picture for the holidays and i wanted it to be heavy on fashion just because i really enjoy coming up with outfits especially if there's a theme attached in which case now there was the holiday theme or whatever and so, but when I started, I didn't have any specific like costume or outfit in mind. So I typically just start with like drawing the bodies. And I will say that I did not use any references for this, which is why it was kind of cool. I thought it would be cool to show you guys the different poses that I ended up drawing for zero. I really like the sweet pose and like from the get go. So I never really made crazy changes with that, except for her the positioning of her arms which had to like work in relation to the secondary character pose but yeah that didn't go through a whole lot of changes but as you probably saw in the video i redrew zero like a bunch of times and tried out a bunch of different leg positions it is something that i typically do when i don't have a specific pose in mind so i tend to just see what works best and most of the time it takes like several iterations for the pose and since by the time I was happy with the posing, I still didn't really know what outfits I was going to do. I decided to just ink it to kind of refresh um, refresh my vision of this piece, I guess. Because I got kind of sick of looking at the rough line, mostly because I spent so much time like just redrawing Zero's pose. So yeah, I ended up doing a bunch of, I guess, unnecessary inking work, but it really helped to clean up the piece and kind of helped me look at it in a fresh way, at which point I started to look around Pinterest to see for, uh, to gather some inspiration for the outfits, which wasn't particularly fruitful. Um, as you can see, I'm trying like a bunch of different outfits as well, and I wasn't really happy with any of them, so I ended up actually just taking a break and then coming back to it later. And I finally was able to settle on an outfit, but not even completely, because at this point, the only thing I'm really trying to figure out is the shapes and just like the overall like style of garments, I guess. It can sometimes be difficult to do that if I do the bodies first, because I... I guess put in a bunch of, you know, conscious effort into making pleasing shapes in the bodies that I don't want to cover them up afterwards, which is kind of funny. It's something I should probably think about in the future. Uh, th this is why I like seldom draw very, bul um, not bulky, mm, like thick and 
shapeless, formless clothes? I don't know. Baggy clothes, that's what I'm looking for. The, the word baggy. Anyways, yeah, I, I seldom draw baggy clothes because I always start with the bodies and I always just love the shape of the body that I end up with, so I just draw like form-fitting stuff. And yeah, actually, that's something I should probably combat going forward. And also notice that sometimes when I draw baggier tops, I make them transparent, just so you can still see the shape of the body underneath. But anyways, so yeah, as you can see, um, at this point, I kind of figured it out and um, I decided to move on to the inking without having really decided on any colors. Um, I've noticed a lot of artists do a rough draft for colors before cleaning up. And that's actually something I kind of want to try doing. I think that it might help because I ended up doing a lot of experimentation with colors when I do like a random piece like this. And maybe I'll, it'll save me some time if I just do it initially and um, clean up afterwards. But regardless, yeah, um, after I pretty much settled on what clothing I'm going to do, I just cleaned it up on top of the line work of the bodies. And I'm... I'm trying to, as always, like keep things on different layers because I know that one big part of my process is changing the colors of the line work later on. And so I try to keep it more or less organized so that it'll be easier to do that later. And another thing that I do actually is, I don't know why I even bother doing this, but I kind of try to like draw around the already existing lines so that I can use the paint bucket tool afterwards even though i don't even think that's necessary because i ended up using the lasso tool to select the area anyways i'm just rambling at this point right so i frequently get asked in many of my videos how i change the colors of the line work and i'm sure i've mentioned this before and i'm sure a lot of you guys know how it's done but i'll just say it here in case somebody doesn't know and it's the function called pixel lock on uh separate layers like any layer can have this function it's typically like in in photoshop you can see it to the right there's the lock and has a little square next to it yeah you just press that on a layer and then you can draw over the lines and it'll only color the lines so yes hopefully that helped somebody uh, it's actually what i'm doing right now and yeah typically how I go about picking colors is relatively straightforward like for these characters I already knew their basic color scheme I I don't know if anyone noticed probably not but they I actually draw their uh I pick different colors for their eyes depending on the piece so they don't even have like a set eye color my explanation for this is that they wear a lot of colored contacts but I don't know it's totally unnecessary but I guess it's I don't know I, I like to have an explanation for all the little things like that but uh yeah obviously since it's like a holiday themed um drawing i wanted to use red for sure and green and otherwise uh i figured gold would be a nice little accent color and that's pretty much the color sch scheme i had in mind and so what you can see is me just basically picking colors that are adjacent to the ones i just mentioned or you know within that color scheme Yes, so aside from that, there isn't a whole lot to say. So I'm just gonna talk about a couple of other things that I wanted to mention. So yeah, since it's 2022 and it's my first video, I wanted to maybe tell you guys just a brief thing about what I'm planning to work on. So I got kind of very frustrated with freelance work once again uh, in the last quarter, in the last two quarters of last year of 2021 because even though I wasn't going to do freelance anymore last year I still ended up doing a bunch uh for reasons which I will not get into here but I am trying again to not do any more freelance at the start of this year and I'm actually working on some very exciting new things I don't know if I want to announce it just yet, but I am working on a new project that is not a freelance thing, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully, I will be able to talk about it soon and share some stuff. And unfortunately, it's not exactly my Gloaming Veil vale comic, but it is related, so that's good, I suppose. And now that I'm I've mentioned Gloaming Veil, vale, I, I know that I've been very slow on that front, and trust me, it's something that never really escapes me every day i know that i'm just failing to do the things that i want to do but 
I don't know, I'm just gonna keep trying to make it happen eventually. It's, it is really difficult because it takes a lot of organization and such, but I am getting there and I have finished um, thumbnailing the first 20 pages or so, which is the prologue of the story. So yeah, I am actually planning to just start that very soon. Um, I was kind of debating on whether I should do it on paper or digitally for a while, but I, I do think I am going to just do the whole comic digitally because I don't think it would be a good idea to do it traditionally. Anyway, so that's as far as the news are concerned. So yeah, hopefully I will be able to stick to my goals and uh, make things happen this year. I'm very hopeful. I know I, I always talk about it, so I'm just gonna stop right here and say that I will try harder this year. But yeah, so back to the drawing. Um, at this point, this is pretty much where I decided to switch to the Cintiq because I could no longer deal with the um, the, the pen being a little bit frayed and uh, failing to register now and then. So I just transferred the file over and filmed a little bit of that process as well. I thought it would be kind of cool to uh, have the screen recording and the footage with my hand in it side by side, but then my camera died. So unfortunately that doesn't last for the rest of the video. <laughs> but at least you get to see a little bit of it. So yeah, um, at this point, I'm actually deciding on a lot of the details that I didn't really have in mind um, in the sketching phase, but uh, so I, <sighs> okay, so the first thing I'm, that I'm doing is obviously just elaborating on the details in the face and uh, fixing the little things. This is actually one of my favorite parts of the process. I think it really doesn't take very long, but makes it come together and uh, look a lot more polished just with a few simple strokes and fixing of um, uncomfortable looking overlaps here and there. And yeah, I, I kind of thought about what I want to do with zero stop for a little while and I did decide to make it a transparent type of blouse thing that I am starting to see as a pattern with things that I like drawing a lot. I really enjoy drawing the texture of transpa transparent fabric and I'm actually... Okay, so actually, while I'm talking about fabric and fashion and sweet and zero, I wanted to let you guys know that one of the things that I really, really want to do in the future is make a little, like a small art book that's not huge, uh, that's maybe like 50 pages in length or something. So maybe more like a zine just dedicated to these two girls and some fashion related illustrations because it's something I really, really love doing, don't do enough of, and sometimes I feel like it's it can feel tough and chaotic to mash together all of my artwork into one art book that's supposed to be like the whole of what I do because I do switch back and forth so much between digital and traditional and I do think that my digital work carries a vastly different energy than my traditional work and so I thought it would be really cool to just do one little art book that focuses on my digital and fashion specific illustration work only and that would be a lot of fun so that's something i'm going to try to pull together maybe this year hopefully and i have a lot of things in mind for some outfits that i want to try one of the things that actually crossed my mind recently is that i wanted to try to make um make like a little challenge for myself where i do either like a weekly or a daily quick drawing of one of these characters uh, basing, just designing an outfit on the spot based on some sort of weird looking bird or animal. So that sounds like a lot of fun to me. I've never really done that before. I've seen a lot of people do that with objects. Actually, maybe I could do, hmm, I'll have to pick one theme, but, uh, and then maybe save another one for later. But yeah, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter, like artists on Twitter and uh, even a little bit on Instagram do this type of challenge where they design a character. It's very costume heavy usually based on either like some sort of intricate object or like a plant or an animal. So yeah, that's something that I definitely want to try doing this year. It sounds like a lot of fun to me. So yeah, um, back to the drawing. At this point, I have pretty much put in most of the details that I was planning to, and I'm just adding some shading to Sweet's hair, and actually, now that I think about it, I did, I didn't even use 
the shading method that I typically do on like a separate layer. Um, usually I do one shadow pass on a separate layer for the entire picture, but in this one, I did some of the quote unquote shading, which is very graphic because you can see just on the same layer as the base, like Zero's legs is the best example of that in this, uh, in this drawing where I didn't even bother doing it on a different layer, probably because I knew that I was going to put tights on her, but anyways. So my process is becoming a little more haphazard, but I think it has gotten faster as well. So I don't know. We'll see where I take it this year. Pretty excited to try and continue to simplify my process so that I can make more art and uh, waste less time. Something I'm apparently always obsessed with, but I never feel like I get enough done and have enough time. So yeah. Okay, so for the sweater, I was debating doing um, the entire sweater with the Christmas pattern thing, but I decided that it might be too busy. And so I just erased the stuff that I did on the top of the sleeve. But now looking back on the footage, I kind of wish I kept it because I do, I do like how it looks looking back. But as you can see, I ended up erasing it and just moving on. So, you know, in retrospect, could change some stuff. But yeah. And one of the last things i'm doing is also figuring out what kind of leggings and or stockings i'm putting on zero and as you can see i just made a new layer this is actually kind of a uh, neat tip i don't know probably obvious but i figure i just mention it anyways um in order to make tiny details and like accessories like jewelry especially and little things like that i often just make a new layer and give it a stroke like turn on the stroke option and if it's gold uh, I'll make it like a darker yellowish color um, for the stroke and maybe set it to a very low uh, circum low mm, pixel number so for this it depends on your resolution but I typically like use like two or three pixels or something just so that when I put down a dot for instance it has an uh, the stroke makes an outline obviously and thus it's a lot faster to draw accessories like um, any sort of jewelry, like I said, or chain, like little chains and things like that. So I use that to make accessory drawing faster quite frequently, actually, especially when I do concept stuff for freelance work. So yeah, and that's pretty much the end. As you can see, I decided to change the color of Zero's fishnets as well from red to green. And again, looking back on it, I feel like I may have made the wrong call. I think maybe a red would have looked better, but honestly, whatever. I'm still very happy with how this turned out in the end. I think it captured just like this fun energy that I wanted it to. And I think it would be a nice image to put into a folder that will eventually be filled with illustrations of these two. So that's pretty much it for this video. And before I go, I just wanted to mention that I'm planning to hold a very big sale in my shop very soon. And it's probably going to be within the next few days, like within the next three to four days or something like that. I haven't said it exactly on what time or which day yet. So I would highly suggest signing up for my mailing list at cosmicspectrum.art uh, in order to find out updates and get like special discounts and, and or early access possibly. So if you do that, that would be great. And you will receive all the news on my upcoming projects and store sales. So again, soon store sale. Uh, if you wanted to grab my art book one of these days this would be a great time because i will have a bunch of discounted ones up and yeah that being said thank you so much guys for watching my videos and i will see you in the next one bye